Well, it's good to be here. Glad you're here with me tonight. Um, it would be so easy to come out here and talk about a bunch of stuff. Um, it would be easy to come out here and talk about politics. It'd be easy to come out here and be angry at things that you know is not, is not right. Um, the new administration hadn't been in there 24 hours and has already just about made a joke the last 24 hours of everything they've accomplished. It's really sad. I could talk about the loss of jobs. I could talk about the joke being made when the vice president swore in the three people that was newly elected officials and how it was basically a mock show. It's just sad. It really is sad. Um, I don't know the future. Um, there's just so many things that breaks your heart. You see people lose their jobs. Um, I think anybody would have seen the handwriting on the wall the weeks leading up to the event that they was about as prepared as they could be under the circumstances. But it's just it's just a shame, it really is. But, you know, we're living in troubled times. Um, I was looking in the book of Ephesians, and uh, I picked out a couple, two, three verses. But, like I said, it would be so easy to come out here and be upset and be angry and lash out and put people to be in boredom because everybody like myself that watches the news has to be sick to their stomach. Um, I realize and understand the liberal press is going to do what they do best. They're going to run cover. I watched a Burt Reynolds movie last night. I watched it several times, and I knew everything that was going to happen, but Burt Reynolds in the movie White Lightning was the one that was running the blocker for the moonshine cars. And what his job was, was to get between the one that was carrying the moonshine and the law. And he was to try to keep the law at bay so that the moonshine could get through. And that's sort of the way it is now. The media is sort of running cover for the ones that's hauling the moonshine. And the media is allowing themselves to take sides to allow the evil to go on. What are they going to do when all the migrant people get up here and they stand at that brand new border wall? What are they going to do? What, are they, what is the United States going to do? I have a feeling a lot of it is going to be taught. And then they're going to allow people over and they're going to allow health care to Everybody that's not American citizen, you know, it just saddens you to know where the things are. But the Christian has a lot to look forward to. The Christian has a lot to be excited about. You know, I, I would love to see real revival. 
And I might even maybe do a message on what real revival really is. I've done it before, but it's been a long time ago. But I would love to see revival. I would love to see lost people saved. And you know, a lot of lost people don't get saved until they're at the bottom of the well and they're looking up. I've seen some YouTube videos where a dog was at the bottom of the well and the dog was alive because there was a little bit of dirt of where that dog could sit, but there ain't no telling how long that dog was there, but somebody rescued that dog. And you know, the Lord, I believe he's going to rescue his people in his time. He knows what people go through. I don't know when the Lord's coming back. I do know that he said he was. That's enough for me. If my job is to continue to try to help a few people to be reminded that heaven is real, that hell is real, that's part of my job. That's part of my duty. My duty is not to get angry at politics because we all know that politics is crooked. We know that. That's not nothing to blow our minds to know that politics is Nothing but crooked. And you know, Mr. Trump wasn't perfect. And I, I've said that the whole time. But I believe that he did what he could under the circumstances. He did all he could do under the circumstances. Was he a hothead? Yes. Did he say things that he wished he could take back? I'm sure he could. But he was who he was. At least you knew where he stood, whether you liked him or whether you hated him. At least you knew where he stood. He ticked people off. And he was good at knowing how to do that. But he also got things done. So you have to almost wonder... If I would have been him, I'd have been looking for an exit a long time ago. And I hope that sometime today he had time to play a game of golf. I hope that he didn't even have the television channel on where he had to be bogged down with all the garbage and all the work that the man done to see it all go to pot. <laughs> in less than 24 hours. But you know, God is still in control. He's still over all things. He's over his word. We're going to read a few verses now in the word of God. We're in the book of Ephesians chapter 5. And I'm going to start at verse 15. See then that ye walk circumspectly. Now, the King James uses the word circumspectly, but it actually means to be, to be cautious. Be, to be careful, to be cautious, to be observant. See that ye walk circumspectly. There's only one way to walk cautiously, and that is walking in salvation. Because the rest of that verse says, not as fools. A fool says in his heart, there is no God. That's the reason that he's a fool. If somebody goes and says that there is not a God, he's talking like a fool. I wish we could interview the rich man and ask him if there's a God or not. He would flat out tell you tonight that there is a God because he's experiencing that torment that the Bible talked about in Luke chapter 16. 
See then that ye walk circumspectly. See that ye walk. It didn't say that you run circumspectly, that you walk circumspectly. That means I didn't run to come out here tonight. I walked out here tonight. I walked carefully until I got to the door of my room. I turned on the light outside. I walked in my room. I turned the light on out here. I opened my Bible up. And I noticed a couple of verses that made sense that I could talk about. There's a lot of places in the scripture it would take me hours to study to be able to talk about it. And then there are certain places that you can come out here and read one time and feel like that you know exactly what to say. I had to look up that word circumspectly to know what it means in order for me to bring it to people on the other end of the video. I had to look up the word. See, he says here, seeing then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. See, a wise person ain't going to be foolish. And there's no certain such thing. There's no such thing if you're walking circumspectly and you're walking cautiously. You're walking cautious with the Lord's help, meaning that the Lord is in you when you're walking. If you don't have the Lord in you, then you are going to be as a fool. Until the Lord saves you and redeems you, you are going to walk. A lot like a fool would walk. It would be like me walking out here with my eyes closed. With a rag over my eyes. I might maybe could feel my way to get out here. But look how many times I would fall to get out here. See, he's telling us here to walk circumspectly. Not as fools, but as wise. But the scripture keeps on going. Redeeming the time. Redeeming the time. Meaning take advantage of the time. Meaning the time that we have to walk circumspectly. Not as fools, but as wise. Wherefore, it says redeeming the time because the days are evil. See, we live in an evil day. Paul saw this evil day back in the time that he wrote this Ephesian book. He saw there was evil that was going on. Is it any different today than the evil that it was back in his day? Redeeming the time because the days are evil. And they are. And they're going to get more and more evil until the Lord says enough is enough. And he's going to come get the Christian. He's going to get, come get the people that are born from above. The ones that the Lord saved by his mercy and grace. The Lord is still saving today. I don't know if you know that or not. If you're out there tonight and you're lost, the Lord is still saving. He still wants to save. And he'll save as long as someone has that desire to walk circumspectly or to be cautious. But he knows who's walking cautious that doesn't know him. And you might could be walking very cautious but if you don't know him, you're going to fall. You're going to trip. You're going to go down. You might not go down today or tomorrow or the next day, but there will become a time when you will go down because the Lord will tell you to depart from me. You might not ever fall down between now and the time the Lord returns, 
But if you don't know the Lord, he's going to tell you to depart from him, that he doesn't know you. I think it said that in Matthew today when I was reading in the book of Matthew. I think it said something to that effect. Redeeming the time. Making the time wise is what he's saying. Because the days are evil. But verse 17 says this. Wherefore be ye not unwise. See, he just said to be wise up there in verse 15. See that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, or because of what I said, when you see that wherefore, wherefore be ye not unwise. Don't be unwise. That means to heed the advice. My suggestion today, would you heed the advice that I'm telling you? A person that is lost needs to know Jesus. They need to have the Spirit of God inside them so that when the Lord does return, and He is going to return, that he wants to return with you on his list to come get. And it says here, Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. See, a lot of times we don't want to know what the will of the Lord is. Don't tell me what the will of the Lord is, because I don't want to change my life. So just don't even tell me what the will of the Lord is. No part of the will of the Lord is not to have your mind hung up on politics. Like I said, I could have spent the whole 15 minutes out here talking nothing about politics. It ain't going to do you a blooming bit of good. But I can tell you about the one that is way better than any politics. That politics is going to let you down. Politics is going to lie to you. Politics is going to hurt you. Politics is going to ruin you. And Jesus knew that it would ruin you. He told the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all of the religious people that. And some of them didn't want to listen. But what does he say right here? Wherefore... Be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Do we even care to know what the will of the Lord is? I've often said it, and I'll say it to y'all. If the Lord was to give me ten people to assist in helping to get to heaven... I don't want to go to heaven with eight. I don't want to go to heaven with a passing grade of seven. I want to go to heaven with all ten. Honestly, I'm just being totally honest. I want to go to heaven with all that the Lord gives me to get. Whoever this video is for, I want it to hit every home that the Lord will allow this video to go into. I'm not going to sit here and promise you that everything is going to be peaches and cream. I'm not going to say you're not going to have struggles and trials in this life. But he said, I will be with you and I'll go with you all the way to the end of the world. And that's what he told us he would do to the ones that know him, to the ones that are walking wise, to the wall, to the ones that are walking circumspectly, meaning to be cautious. The Lord just wants you to know him. You need to know him tonight. You need to make sure when you lay down and you go to bed tonight that you 
know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he is there for you. He's there for you because he wants you to be his child and he deals with your heart and he tells you in his word for whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He just simply wants you to call on him. Call on him today. Make sure that he sees your heart. If you need help, call me. I don't care what time it is, call me. Elderly Ministry is the website. There's a phone number under the contact list that you can call that cell number. Leave a message, and I will return that call so that you can be able to talk to somebody, have somebody to help explain things to you. I hope that you do. I hope that you take me up on the offer to let me help. I don't mind a bit in the world. I'd be honored to be able to help. Make sure that you're cautiously walking in Jesus. He said he would save you if you call on him. I hope that you call on him. I thank y'all for watching. Share the video if you think it'll help somebody. Do your part to get the video out there. It's not hard to do. Share the video. Thank y'all for watching.